Hazza Lake, also known as Golkuk Lake, is located 20 km southeast of Alazig province. This lake is located on the continuation of one of the most important tectonic faults in the Earth's crust in eastern Anatolia. It can be said that the Hazza Lake Depression was formed between the end of the Upper Miocene and the Lower Pliocene, depending on the formation and development of the eastern Anatolian fault. The lake is located in a tectonic depression in the southwest-northeast direction. There are various opinions about its depth. Different measurements or estimates between 152 and 300 meters have been expressed. The lake water is not suitable for agricultural irrigation because it is soda and salty. Carp, mirror carp and silverfish are the fish found in the lake. Hazza Lake is located on one of the largest fracture lines in the world. This rift line, which starts from the Mozambique Channel in East Africa, reaches the Red Sea, then passes through some depression trenches and reaches the Orontes Depression in the east of the Ansuriye Mountains in Syria. From here it continues via Kirakan to Karaman Maras. Finally, it is connected to the Eastern Anatolian Fault with the Karaman Maras joint. The Eastern Anatolian Fault extends towards Karliova via Pazarchik, Golbasi, Erkanek, Selikan, Sinchik, Potaj, Lake Hazza, Palu, Gokdare, Bingal and Goynik. Here it merges with the North Anatolian Fault. This eastern Anatolian fault passes through this lake. Now, after this brief information about the lake, let's return to our main topic. We arrived at the area where I always come for bird watching in very windy weather. This is the eastern shore of the lake, a location close to Plajkoi. Little egret exhibits hunting behavior that we have not witnessed before. The little egret is a very elegant bird. You do not think so? They took their place in this region this year, as every year. A sandpiper is feeding right in front of us. We have difficulty distinguishing some small passerines and sandpipers in terms of species definition. If you know the name of this species, please share it with us in the comments section.
the common moor hen came very close to us. It feeds almost right at the bottom of the car. Here the birds did not perceive us as a threat. The camouflage we put on the car window seems to have worked. Of course, this is not always the case. Sometimes, even though we wait silently for hours, they never come near the car. Today is our lucky day. Now we will follow the birds in the small forest right near the lake. Various bird sounds are heard from around. It takes an expert to recognize their voices. It could be a coal tit or any songbird that lives in woodlands. There is a bird right above us that we thought was a coal tit, but unfortunately it was out of the question for us to photograph it because it was moving too fast. We take a look at the windy lake shore and then decide to go to an area with more trees. Imaging small songbirds is a real challenge. They hide in trees or bushes and move quickly. Even if you see them, they have moved on to another branch by the time you press the shutter.
There is an incredible wind here. It's blowing very hard. Taking bird photos in the forest. Let's see if we can succeed. We return from the forest empty-handed. When we could not get the images we wanted in the forest, we shot from the car at a point close to where the stream flows into the lake for a while. A little further on we saw a duck we had never seen before. The sound of the great reed warbler can also be heard. This tripod makes our job difficult. The duck is already gone.
we go towards the place where the sound comes from to view the great reed warbler. We spotted a European bee-eater and a common chiff-chaff. Although we heard its voice, we could not see the great reed warbler. Let's go to the opposite shore and try our luck there. We could not see the great reed warbler. There is a very strong wind and it has started to rain. The last stop of our birdwatching day is the pool, as the people living here call it.
This is actually an area with higher reeds, but it appears that the reeds have been destroyed. Naturally or unnaturally. Species such as grey heron, little egret, western marsh harrier, little grebe, Eurasian coot, Armenian gull, common moorhen, and great reed warbler can also be seen here. Now we leave you alone with this beautiful environment. If you like this video, you can support us by subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you in new videos, goodbye.